Okay, question 19 then. Um, write an equation for the reaction of magnesium with hydrochloric acid. Uh, uh, and observation of what it states in as well. So of course, magnesium will be a solid. HCl will be aqueous. The formula of magnesium chloride, MgCl2, that will be aqueous. And you're going to make hydrogen gas like so. Um, and what will you observe? Well, you observe fizzing because of the hydrogen gas being involved, and you observe the magnesium dissolving, so the magnesium would disappear. How would the latter degree of magnesium chloride and calcium chloride differ? Well, magnesium chloride, MgCl2, calcium chloride, ClCl2. Obviously, the calcium ion, and it's really important to talk about it as ion, the calcium ion is larger than the magnesium ion and therefore the calcium ion will have a smaller charge density because it's larger, um, the charge is spread over a larger area, so a smaller charge density and therefore less attraction to the chloride ion um, and therefore the lattice entropy will be less exothermic for calcium chloride. Okay, so uh, we're going to find the lattice entropy now. Um, of magnesium chloride. So, and it's giving me some letters that it wants me to pop in the boxes. So, first of all, this one, magnesium and chlorine becoming magnesium chloride, that is formation. So, that is going to be D, formation of magnesium chloride. Um, this one here is magnesium solid becoming magnesium gas. So, that is atomization of magnesium, which is E. Uh, this one that is going to actually be the atomization of chlorine, so that is going to be 2 times 150. Uh, let's just put the numbers on as well because it will help us later. That's going to be plus 76. This one will be minus 642. Um, this is going to be B, which is the first ionization energy of magnesium, so that's plus 736. This next one is the second ionization energy of magnesium, so that's F, and that is 1450. This one here is the electron affinity of chlorine. Uh, remember I've got two chlorine atoms, so that's two times chlorine 49. And finally, this is the lattice entropy, which is what I'm trying to find out. Okay, and then you need to know the equation that the lattice entropy delta HL is equal to your entropy of formation minus everything else. So you just add all these numbers up. So 76 plus, this is going to be 300 plus uh, 736 plus 1450 minus 698 for that, um, and if you do all of that, you should come to minus 2506 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so uh, we're going to look at halogen displacement reactions now. Um, describe and explain the relative re reactivity of halogens, chlorine, bromine, and iodine in their redox reactions with the halides using reactions on a test tube scale. Include reaction equation and observations. Okay, so first of all, the halogens get less reactive as you go down the group. That's because the atoms get larger as you go down the group. And so the incoming electron is entering a shell further away from the nucleus and more shielded from the nucleus and therefore is less attracted uh, to the nucleus. So that's the explanation as to why reactivity decreases. How does that work in terms of reactions? Well... Um, chlorine, Cl2, will displace bromide ions to Br- minus to give you bromine and chloride ions. What would you see? Well, if this was done in aqueous solution, you'd see bromine appear as an orange solution. Chlorine will also displace iodine ions to give you iodine plus 2 Cl minus, what would you see? Well, you would see iodine 
uh, being displaced in aqueous solution, which would give you a dark orange solution. Okay, um, and there, the final one that you could put is Br2 reacting with 2I minus to give you I2 plus 2Br minus. And again, you would see a dark orange precipitate of iron, iodine appearing. Um, and that's because a more reactive halogen displaces a less reactive halogen, a uh, less reactive halide uh, from its uh, compound. Okay, so um, moving on to question 20 then. Um, student wants to prepare a standard solution of 2-hydroxypropanoic acid over a pH of 2.19. Uh, um, plan how we can prepare 250 centimetres cubed in a standard solution from the solid acid, including uh, the practical procedure that would be carried out and quantities and everything. Okay, so it's told me what the pH is. Um, the first thing I need to do is work out also, let's work out the molar mass of 2-hydroxypropanoic acid, and if you do that, you will find it's 90. So, from my uh, pH, uh, equation pH equals minus log to the base 10 of H plus. I can rearrange that um, to find the concentration of H plus ions that will be give me a pH of 2.19. Um, so the concentration is 10 to the minus 2.19 and if you do that calculation you will get your concentration to be 6.457 times 10 to the minus 3 of hydrogen ions. Right, this is a weak acid, uh, so I need to uh, work use Ka for this. Um, Ka, as you know, is the concentration of H plus times the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA, where HA is your weak acid. Where she most are the same, so that is equal to the concentration of H plus squared over the concentration of HA. Um, I know Ka, I know H plus because I've just done that, so from that I can find the concentration of HA. So the concentration of HA is going to equal the concentration of H plus squared over Ka, um, which is this number, 6.457 times 10 to the minus 3 squared over uh, Ka, which they've said is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 4. You do that and you get... Okay, so I'll do this calculation and I will find it to be 0 0.302 moles per decimeter cubed. I really need to know how many grams I'm going to have to dissolve for the experiment. So I convert that by times it by the molar mass, that number by the molar mass, to give me 27.18 grams per decimeter cubed. So I need to divide, uh, dissolve 27.18 grams um, in one decimeter cubed, which is 1,000 centimeters cubed. I only want to make up 250, so I need to divide this number by four to find out how much I need to dissolve in 250, which would be uh, six, 0.80 grams in 250 centimetres cubed, like so. Um, obviously, in terms of the experimental procedure that you would uh, go about, um, you would dissolve the 6.8 grams um, in, uh, measure that in a beaker, um, and then add water to dissolve it, then add that water into a volumetric flask, wash out the beaker with more distilled water, pour that into the volumetric flask so that you make sure all the solids dissolved um, and being transferred to volumetric flask, make the volumetric flask up to 250 and then mix thoroughly um, uh, to make sure that there's an even distribution. So you would invert the volumetric flask, say 10, 10 to 20 times or so. Um, I was always told it should be 50 times, but that seems a little bit extreme.